$5.5 billion is how much President Mohamed Buhari is asking for in a fresh loan request. And also, the Niger Delta Development Commission is pointing fingers at the National Assembly. They say the Assembly is responsible for the rot in the Commission. This is Plus Politics, and I am Benny Ark. This is Plus Politics. The Senate on Thursday justified the $5.513 billion fresh external loan request from the President. Major General Mohamed Buhari retired, insisting that it would not be a burden to the country. The National Assembly had in April this year approved the sum of 850 billion naira domestic loan request of the President to finance projects in the 2020 budget. The loan was to be sourced from external domestic lending institutions but the arrangement was frustrated due to the outbreak of the COVID-19 pandemic. And joining us to speak on this is political analyst, Mr. Gbola Ba. And hopefully as we progress in the show, we'll be joined by the special advisor to the president on media and publicity, Mr. Femi Adeshina. Thank you, Mr. Gbola Ba, for joining us on the show tonight. Thank you very much for the opportunity once again. Yet another budget pardon saga. What's your perspective on the growing feud between the NDDC and the National Assembly? To be very honest with you, I think it's something that the general public has to diligently look into. And the reason why I believe we need to look beyond the theatrics and the dramatics is because since 1999, the National Assembly has earned the negative reputation of being a cesspit of connivances and compromises and a degree of blackmailing shiftings of executive agencies to, to, for, for the legislators to make money. One had always thought that under President Muhammad Buhari, that wouldn't be uh, much of an issue. But there we are. Uh, uh, and this is not the first time. You must remember that the former DG of SEC once stood in front, of, in front of one of the chambers of the National Assembly and accused some members of the House of Representatives just like the NDDC chieftains are now accusing some members of their other representatives of shaking them down. So I'm one who is cautiously following the intrigues and would love to see where ultimately it ends. All right, we're now being joined by the special advisor to the president on media and publicity, Mr. Femi Adeshina. Mr. Femi Adeshina, thank you for joining us on the show tonight. Thank you. Now, the PDP has called out President Mahmoud Buhari to desist from what he described as placing the nation and, uh, on an international auction market following increased borrowing. What's your reaction to this? Well, I usually don't like to talk about PDP because since that party lost power in 2015, it's been behaving irrationally, talks irrationally, responds irrationally, and it just utterly confused. The case of the party was made worse in 2019 when it lost the election again. It likes it has completely gone round the bend. But then, you have been asked me uh, what my reaction would be to what the PDP has said. Yes, had husbanded the resources of the country properly when oil sold at $143 per barrel and stabilized at $100 per barrel for a number of years. If it has utilized that money well, if it has built up the foreign reserve, if it has saved locally, Nigeria will not need to borrow. Recall that before that party was given the left leg of fellowship in 2015, the 
coordinating minister of the economy had told the country that that government didn't have the will to save. That was number one. Number two, she also told the country that the, con the government was already borrowing to pay salaries. Now the question is, what happened to the humongous revenue coming from oil? If that revenue had been properly husbanded, properly utilized, Nigeria would not need any cost for loan. And PDP would not then be saying all the irrational things it is saying now. So if Nigeria is going for loans, it was because PDP was a spendthrift party. It spent everything that came in. It either misappropriated, stole, or wasted it. And Nigeria had no reserve. That is why we are in the loans market now. Now, Mr. Adishino, according to data by the Debt Management Office, the DMO, domestic debt stock by instrument as at December 31 stood at about 14.27 trillion naira in total. I understand that the purpose of loans should be directed at the advancement of economies and primarily a people. In quantitative terms, this is not reflected in the expected drop in, in the poverty levels. What do you say to that? Poverty does not drop overnight. It's accumulation. Poverty responds to policies and programs. And policies and programs have their gestation period. It is after the gestation period and they have matured that you begin to see the impact on poverty level and on the lives of the people. Mr. Adishina, I do agree with you when you earlier said that it's not out of place for economies, countries of the world to go a borrowing. Um, great economies of the world go borrowing, especially when they have uh, infrastructure development programs to, to use for that loan. Now, but as you know, the inability to repay these loans will further tighten the fluidity of the country assessing future loans. As it stands, is Nigeria best footed to repay these loans? Now, it's talking about the $22.7 billion loan, the $5.5 the .5 billion fresh request amongst others. What the IMF said some months back, it said, compared to Nigeria's gross domestic product, Nigeria was even under borrowing. That was the IMF. They compared to the GDP of the country, the country was under borrowing because it has the capacity to repay those loans. That was the IMF. The Minister of Finance, Budget, and National Planning also told the country then that the level of our GDP can accommodate the loans we are taking. But some people seem not to have had, or that they deliberately didn't want to hear that. Nigeria can accommodate the loans she is taking. And those institutions that give loans, they are not for the Christmas. If they had assessed that Nigeria couldn't repay, would they give? No. So the fact that they are giving the loans to Nigeria in itself is a measure of confidence in the Nigerian economy. Now, Nigerians are asking what methods, what machineries are in place for the repayment of this loan? If, if you can help us enumerate any of the measures, mechanism that will be put in place for the repayment of most of these loans, Mr. Adishina. That, that would not be for me to enumerate because when you apply for a loan embedded in your application and the approval is the methodology of repayment. It is part of your application, it is part of the approval process. Loans are not first approved, and then you begin to talk of methodology of repayment. No, it is part of the application and approval process. Now, putting into consideration the dual hit of the COVID-19 pandemic on oil price and the health system as obtainable right now, as well as the devaluation of the currency, this raises questions regarding cost of borrowing from multilateral institutions, which could potentially make the cost of borrowing very high. How do we hope to cope with all of this? It all still boils down to the ability of your economy to repay. As long as the fundamentals of your economy are strong, then you'll be able to... And when you borrow to 
pockets, borrow to divert, borrow to steal, as we have seen in this country before. It becomes a problem to the country. But when you borrow for development, that development itself will generate and stimulate your ability to repay. Now, Mr. Femi, can you, can you allay the fears of many Nigerians who are concerned about majority of these loans and how it, at the end of the day, is going to reflect in, in, in the life of the common man in Nigeria and that we definitely have no need to be afraid of these loans being requested for by Mr. President? Yeah, the loans, the loans are unfounded. They, they, no, the they fears, rather, the fears are unfounded. If anybody exercises any fears about these loans, they are unfounded. Because one, if Nigeria would not be able to pay, even the lenders would not give in the first place. And then two, the loans are not being taken to be misappropriated or pocketed or stolen. They have been taken for developmental projects. And those projects in themselves will yield and also facilitate repayment. Finally, before I let you go tonight, another point that was raised was well-known conversation about reducing the cost of governance. What areas would you suggest is cut off to curb waste? Well, you know that is an endless debate in Nigeria. Whether reducing the cost of governance will amount to anything significant. But, but do, you agree, do you agree that the cost of running governance in Nigeria is pretty high? Do you agree with that claim? It's, 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 it's not for me to agree or not to agree. You know, I'm a media person in government. I'm not an economist. I'm not a finance person. I'm just a media person in government. So it's those who know the figures that can either tell you, yes, it can or it cannot impinge on the cost of governance. I do not have the figures, so I cannot tell. Mr. Femi, additional special advisor to the president on media and publicity, thank you very much for joining us and for your time on, on the show tonight. Thank you. All right, we'll bring back Mr. Gwaloba and let's conclude on the segment. Mr. Gwaloba, are you there? Okay, yes, I can hear you. Can you oh, hear me? Okay. Now, you heard mostly what Mr. Femi, additional a reaction to the PDP's claim that the a APC administration is auctioning Nigeria to international market, and most of his own rebuttal to that claim by the PDP. I, I need your quick reaction to this. I'm very honest with you. I think it's not fair for me to say some of the things I want to say because he does not have the opportunity of rebuttal. It's practically off your screen now. I don't even suppose he's still, you know, he's still listening to me, and it's just not fair to say some of the things. I want to say because some of the things I want to say would have necessitated him responding to. It's just that, you know, um, the, some of the things he said about PDP, I fully agree with. Uh, I fully agree with because those were the reasons that made me to campaign for his principal in 2015. But in, 20, in 2019, I refused to campaign for the two major candidates, the PDPs and the APCs, because the two of them were just, uh, you know, six and, a, six and a half a dozen to me. Um, the only thing I need to just say as a form of polite advice to him is that when he keeps saying the PDP is now, uh, so it should not be taken seriously, he should remember that the PDP is still the official opposition party of the polity. The official opposition party of the polity, that is one. Two is that the PDP got it right full come up in 2015. And to be very honest, at this juncture, the way most Nigerians are feeling, the APC may not be doing too much better than the PDP. But you know what? On some of the other issues that he touched on, because it doesn't have, it doesn't seem to me to have the right of the bottle now, I hold, I hold the fire some other day, some other platform. 
Now, he did say, uh, lastly, before we go to the next segment, he did say that the, the IMF, the, the, the loaning body, do, did say that we have the capacity in that we are under borrowing. What's your reaction to this? Mr. Adeshina needs to look at the history of IMF loans across the world and how the loans by the Bretton Woods institutions have always, most times, turned out to be death traps and death nail to most of the nations that they've given it to. Indeed, Nigeria's contemporary history is something to allude to. It took loan cancellation under the administration of President Olusegun Obasanjo for us to bail ourselves out not only of IMF loans, but other Western, uh, Western loan, loan arrangements. I'm sitting here now that we are even further complicating that with loans now from China, and we can see contemporary history, we, we can see contemporary uh, issues on loans or facilities from China, from, from countries on the east coast of Africa, to, to countries in Asia, to countries in, in, in the Caribbean and Latin America. I'm sitting there believing or thinking that the conceited submission by Mr. Additional, that the loan givers would have done their homework and that they would be given the loan based on some fundamentals, I'm saying the history of these institutions and how those loans have turned to cool this act for beneficiary nations don't support the submission. What is, past, what is very pertinent in your recommendations, Mr. Gwilaba, as, as a social political analyst for the administration of President Maulabari when it comes to loan borrowings? Oh, I must say, uh, Importantly, at this juncture, that at least we are seeing some of the infrastructures that they are putting in place with those loans. I am one who tries to be fair to all parties, in so much as I believe that our two major political parties in Nigeria, APC and PDP, are just uh, just half, you know, six and half a dozen. But having said that, the PDP gave Nigeria its highest loan or indebtedness profile between March 19, between March 2013 and March 2014. There was a, there was a dramatic jump from $48 billion in our external debt in March 2013 to $65 billion external debt in March 2014. That was the highest. And I dare say as a Nigerian that I can't see any tangible infrastructures, you know, any tangible infrastructure that were put in place, you know, for, for, for those lousy amount of money. But having said that, under the APC, I see the rare projects. I see the legacy burden rare projects almost practically completed except for the the 12 kilometer and the 12 kilometer annex from Costain to uh, to uh, the seaport i see some road projects being done i see the second niger bridge that for so long the other party deceived nigeria indeed on one occasion a president pretended as though the second niger bridge was already ongoing and went to the palace of the Obi of, 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 of Bonucha to go and lie, blatant lie to, to the gentleman. So in some respect, I may want to tick half, just half of the mark for APC doing better with translating some of those facilities to infrastructure. But on a general note, on a general note, the, the kleptocracy under APC may not be as lousy as what we had under the PDP. But like I said earlier on, the PDP has gotten its electoral common pass in 2015. 
and the FTC has to be very circumspect. All right. Thank you, Mr. Bola, Bola Bola, for your contribution to this segment. And you're still with us on the next. We'll take a break now. And when we return, the ongoing saga between the NDDC, the IMC, and the National Assembly is up next for discussion. Stay with us.